Hello guys, it's LazyBeast here, and today we're going to take a look at the Protoform Synthesis system, and I'm going to tell you how to get all of the mounts that are associated with that system. There's quite a lot to get through in this guide, so I'm going to break it down to some nice easy chunks, and we're going to start with how to unlock the system, how to get all the schematics for the mounts, and then how to get all the materials that you're going to need to craft the mounts. It is going to take some time to do this, you're not going to be able to do this all in one day, unless you're absolutely insane, in which case go for it, but otherwise feel free to pause the video at any time, or come back to it whenever you are ready for the next step. I won't discuss the protoform synthesis pets at all in this video, other than just now, unless there's enough demand for it, then I will do a separate video all about the pets. So, how do you unlock these systems? So, if you've been questing and doing anything in Xerath Mortis for a while, you'll likely have been doing the Cyphers of the First Ones uh, talent tree sort of system. And what you need to do to unlock the mounts one is to fully research the Cypher talent, Sopranian Understanding. Once you've researched that, then you'll get some quests. One of them is the final song, and then there's a quest called A New Architect. And once you've done those, you will end the quest line, and that will unlock the mount crafting system for you. Now, the quest actually ends in the Protoform repository, which is where the forge is, but here is where it is on the map, just in case you forgot. So, you've got the system unlocked, you've got your first schematic, and what I'll do now is tell you how to get all the other schematics. Once I've done that, then I'll talk about how to get all the materials that you need to actually craft the mounts. I'm not going to put all the coordinates on the screen for anything that I mentioned in this video because that just means you're going to have to chop and change and find them and pause at the exact right time. So what I'm going to do to make it nice and easy is put them all in the description down below, which will make it nice and easy to copy into the game. If you're using an add-on like TomTom, which I highly recommend, you're going to be able to find these nice and easy. So please check the description down below for all that information and any useful links. So we'll start with the schematics that are actually out in Xerath Mortis itself, and then we'll go on to the ones that are located within the raid sepulchre, the first ones at the end. So starting off with the Adorned Von Bata. So the schematic for this is located inside the Grateful Boon treasure. Now, if you've already looted this treasure before you unlock the Protoform Synthesis mount crafting, then the schematic will just be on the floor in the exact same spot that the treasure was located at. The Bronze Helicid has a chance to be looted from the Tribute of the Enlightened Elders, which is the weekly quest that you get in Xerath Mortis. Patterns within patterns. The Bronze Wing Vespoid is located inside the Gravid Response, so go to the entrance with the coordinates that are in the description, and then once you get there, go on to the right and go up the ramp, and then you'll see the schematic at the top of the ramp. The schematic for Buzz has a chance to be located in the Pulp Covered Relics, so you're just going to have to keep on farming those whenever you see them for a chance at this one. The Darkened Von Bata schematic is located inside a cage in the Arrangements Index. It's nice and easy to get now that you can fly. The Death Runner schematic is the one that you get for completing the quest and you architect, so you'll already have this one unlocked when you unlock the system. For the Desert Wing Hunter, it's just on top of a pillar at the coordinates shown below. Uh, for the Forge Spite Flayer, you just need to go to the coordinates and it's located within the Vespoid Hive. For the Genesis Crawler, what you need to do is go to the Genesis Vestibule and there's a structure that leads up towards the, the alcove. Go on the left hand side of it and you'll reach the schematic there. For the Gold Plate Buffonid, you need to just basically kill accelerated Buffonid mobs in Xerath Mortis. Now these are near the Sepulchre of the First Ones Red, you're just going to have to farm them for this. For the Heartbind Lupine schematic, you need to basically farm more Frenzied Lupines. Again, in Xerath Mortis, they're in the Coral Residuum Cave at the coordinates shown in the description. Now, an interesting one here. Now, the Ineffable Skitterer is given to you by the Shade of Eric 2, but you can only speak to this NPC once you are dead in spirit form. So what you need to do is die near Firim's cave, um, and then go into the cave and speak to him at the back there while you are dead. The schematic for the more adapted Raptora has a chance to be looted off more Sworn Hulks and these are around the Endless Sands area in Xerath Mortis, so again another one that you just need to farm. The Pale Regal Servid schematic is given to you when you achieve the Cyphers of the First Ones achievement, which basically is just for researching everything on the Cyphers of the First Ones. For the Prototype Leaper, basically just go to the coordinates shown. It's on top of a mountain. You can get to this when you're doing the Froggit World quest, or you can just go and fly up there once you're not flying. Once again, if you've already looted the treasure, then just go back to the same place and it'll be there on the floor waiting for you. For the Raptor Swooper, you need to go to the Chamber of Shaping and then go all the way to the back and it's on a bench sort of structure behind the Dominated Architect. For the Russet Buffonid, it has a chance to be looted from the Enlightened Broker Supplies, which is the Paragon Rep Cache for the Enlightened, so you're going to need to get a lot of rep to do this and just hope that it drops nice and quick for you. 
For the Scarlet Healer Sid, you basically just go to the coordinates shown in the description, and it's really easy to get to once you can fly. For the Sundered Zerif Steed, you go to the coordinates shown, and it's inside the More Sworn Cache. Again, if you've already looted this More Sworn Cache, then it will just be on the floor waiting for you. For the Tratni Creeper, follow the coordinates shown in the description, and then go inside the small building in the Arrangement Index, and the schematic is on your right. The unsuccessful prototype fleet pod, which is a bit of a mouthful in itself, requires quite a few more steps than the others, so for this one you're going to have to have researched Altonian understanding and completed the achievement a means to an end before you can even do the next steps. Once you've done both of those things, you go to the coordinates shown in the description to find the Camber alcove arrangement. Once you've unlocked that, then you need to go and get 60 cosmic energy, then go to Gravid Repose, then you teleport to the Inner Locus, once you're in the inner locus, you'll see a second locus shift, and then call the RK locus. Then you use this teleporter to go to the Kamba alcove. It sounds like quite a lot to do, but it's actually quite a simple process. And once you've done it once, you'll understand how to do this. Once you're inside the Kamba alcove, you'll see the little snail mob at the back of the room. If you interact with it, you'll basically just have to complete a little mini game, move the snail through the golden hoops while avoiding the stuff on the floor. And then once you've done that, after doing five golden rings, you'll just see the schematic on the floor. Just pick it up and that's that one done. This next one is again easy once you unlock flying. So this is for the Vespoid Flutterer and it's basically the coordinates shown on the map. It's in the resonant peaks in between all the puzzle platforms. So those are the schematics that are out in the world in Xerath Mortis. Now onto the ones that are inside the sepulchre of the first one's raid. So the first one is for Serenade. Now this is at the northeastern end of the Vigilant Guardian boss, the first boss in the sepulchre of the first one's raid and you just need to loot it off the floor. Now it seems that only one person per raid can loot the schematic, so if you're doing it in LFR, you're going to be racing against other people that are trying to do the same thing. So an easy way to do this is to get into a raid group, you could join the current world boss raid group for example, go into the raid on your own, run past all the mobs, get to where the schematic is, and then loot it, and then you can leave the raid group and you'll get ported out automatically. And the final schematic for the Curious Crystal Sniffer is in the second phase room of the Holondrus boss encounter in the support of the first one's raid. You can again loot this on LFR. I'm not 100% sure if it's only one per raid group again, so just bear that in mind, you may be beaten to it. Because it's in the second phase room, you do have to have killed the boss before the schematic will spawn. You basically need to go and get this immediately after the boss has been killed because if the raid resets in any way, the walls will go back up again and the area will be unreachable. So just, just be as quick as you can get in this one. So with that done, that is all the schematics for all the mounts. Now the real graph begins. That is collecting all the materials to craft them all. Now the easiest one and potentially the grandiest one to get are the Genesis Mots. So you're going to need so many of these Genesis Mots. They drop from pretty much most mobs all over Xerath Mortis, but the best thing to do to farm these is to get yourself into a five-man farm group and just keep killing mobs endlessly. And the best spot to do this is here uh, with the Devourer mobs. And you can get around a thousand of these per hour. Uh, you know, give or take some, depending on how quickly you're killing these and how quickly they're respawning. And if you pull mobs from uh, around the area as well, you can get some more. So this is the most sort of simple part of the farming process. Now the next set of ingredients that you're going to need to craft these, or materials should I say, are the lattices. Now these basically, even though they're green drops, they're quite uncommon drops from most mobs. Now there's usually roughly around a 4% drop chance, between 2 and 4% drop chance of getting a lattice from the relevant creature. So for example, if you're going to go and craft one of the frog mounts, you're going to need a buffonid lattice, which drop from the frog mobs. Now you will likely find that if you kill an elite or a rare of that type of creature, then there's a much higher chance of getting the lattice to drop. For example, with the buffonid lattice, if you kill the accelerated buffonids, there's about a 6% drop chance to get a lattice. Whereas if you kill Gorkek, which is a buffonid rare, there's a 12% chance to get a lattice from it. So if you're going to farm these, the best thing to do is try and target the rares as often as you possibly can, but otherwise just kill the type of creature that you're going for. If you really want to speed this up and you've got a lot of gold and you don't want to waste time, then you can buy these off the auction house, but you will find that they're going for quite a lot of gold for some of them. The Vespoid Lattice on my server was going for 100,000 gold on the auction house, so yeah, you might need to pay a bit of a whack to get these. And the third and final type of ingredient you're going to need for the mounts are the rare materials. So some of these are a little bit more tricky to get, some of them are easy, so let's go through the list. 
So the bauble of pure innovation is nice and easy. This is found at the back of Firim's cave in Exile's Hollow. You will need two of these, so you just need to wait for the respawn. Um, some people have been saying this spawns once a week, so you get another one on each reset, whereas some other people have been saying it can spawn up to every three hours. So just keep checking back for this. Again, you're going to be doing these mount farms for quite a while, so just keep checking back in the cave every now and then for your second bauble. The crystallized echo of the first song uh, looted from a item which has the same name as that, found near the waterfalls in the sepulchre of the first one's area. So if you follow the coordinates given and look for the musical notes and listen for the musical notes, you'll likely see the object and you can just simply loot them there. The Eternal Rage Pearl is quite a low percent drop chance item from quite a few different mobs. Now, a lot of the mobs in the Sepulchre of the First One's Raid will drop this, but if you want to farm this out in the world in Zeref Mortis, then go for the Dominated Rune Shapers or raids like Eovuk. I'm not saying that right. Things like Lost Rubble, Oracle Varaxi, Dominated World Breakers, those type of mobs, and you'll probably get one of these in time. Now this next one is a bit more tricky, so this is the Moreforge Bridle. Now this is a guaranteed drop from the high value cache, which is in the support of the first one's raid. Again, it's in Artificer Zymox's room, and you can only get one of these per week. It doesn't spawn on LFR difficulty, which is where the difficulty comes in here, because you're going to have to do the raid on at least normal. To be able to even open the high value cache, you need the security override orb. Now to get this, there's a mob called Taskmaster Zipro, and you need to kill this mob with the buff security override applied to it. So basically the best thing to do is pull this mob, get it down to low health, and then get some of the broker mobs around it to give it three stacks of synergy, and then it'll gain security override, and then it will drop the item. It only drops the security override orb for someone in the raid group and will only allow that person to unlock the cache, so it's going to take a bit of a while to get this. As a little side note, you can get this from the Olea cache that's viable with 700 ciphers of the first ones from Olea Manu just outside Exile's Hollow. Now, to unlock this guy as a vendor, you basically need to learn the cipher console spell, Altonian Understanding, and then you'll get a quest line that you need to complete that ends with Jiro to Hero. Once you've done that, you can then get the vendor. Now from the Olea cache you can get many other materials and you usually just get a bit of junk but you can get some of these rare materials and lattices and other things like that as well. The next item is the Protoform Sentience Crown. Now these are just an easy simple farm. There's a few decent farm spots for this. Now one of them that I use which I found to be the best one was the Aged Maulers and Forgotten Caretakers at the location shown. Um, in the underground section, you can just basically farm all these rooms and it's pretty quick. I got one in the first pull of five mobs that I did, um, so you can just farm these. Otherwise, farm the dominated Jiro when the World Quest Dangerous State is up. That's another known good farm. Or you can farm the dominated World Breaker and dominated Laborers on the island where the Xerath Mortis World Boss is. The next item is the Revelation Key, and this has roughly a 12-13% to drop chance from the Protector of the First One's rare mob in Xerath Mortis. So you're just going to have to keep on killing this guy and hope for the best. Next we have the Tools of Incomprehensible Experimentation, and these drop from Lehuvim in the support of the First One's raid. So again, more raid and involved. It can drop on LFR though, and you can also get these from the Olea Cache. Next is the Wind's Infinite Call. Now this basically drops from enhanced avian mobs around Xerath Mortis. You can find these all over the island where the support of the first one's raid is, so you're just going to have to farm for this. And unfortunately the drop chance does seem to be around 1%, so good luck with this one. Now the last one, the Unalloyed Bronze Ingot, is the most fiddly one, but it's very easy to do and you can do it solo. So you've got around a 10% chance to get one of these per character per week. Again, it's account bound, so you can do this on alts for even more chances and just send this to your crafting main. So the first thing you need to do is go here, follow these coordinates, and unlock the repertory alcove. Then pop back outside and stand in this spot and grind mobs and get at least 60 cosmic energy. Once you've got that, go up into the gravid repose and then use the locus shift and go to the interior locus. Once you're inside the inner chamber, go to the other locus shift, and then use that to travel to the repertory alcove. Once you get inside there, you'll see a console with six dialogue options, and you want to select the fourth one, which is Restore Genesis Potencies. It will then give you some Genesis modes, and this is where you've got your chance to get the Unalloyed Bronze Ingot. You can only select one dialogue option per week, and then it will put the whole thing on cooldown, so make sure you click the fourth one, the right one. Don't waste your chance at this, and good luck. 
So on screen you'll see exactly how many of everything of these things you're going to need to be able to craft all of the mounts. Now, this is a heck of a lot of work. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, don't think you're going to get this all done in one day because, I mean, you, you probably could if you were able to buy all the lattices and if you got really, really lucky with the drop chances of everything. But this is likely going to take you a few weeks to farm everything. So just enjoy yourself. Take it chill. It's a nice chill activity to do other than the raid and stuff. And I wish you the best of luck in getting everything. So... Thanks so much for watching guys, uh, please do leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed it, if you found it helpful and consider subscribing if you're not already for more guides like this, we're going to be doing so many guides going into Dragonflight and you know everything going forward so once again thanks so much for watching, I've been LazyBeast and I'll catch you next time, cheers.